Welcome in Brian Munson of Husker Online here, Texas's finest. Uh, Brian, did you know you had company down there this weekend? I had company? That's right, my boy Stricky. Stricky popped in, man. I was on the north side, Addison. Oh, were you really? And you didn't even bother to call I what? know, be months. I snuck in. I literally booked the ticket, Brian, uh, on Thursday. Uh, it was either Thursday or Wednesday night because mm-hmm. uh, Spud Webb had a birthday party and um, a, a couple Name other friends. dropping that, on me. What is man, I snuck fault? in, hit it real quick, paused, <laughs> and got out of there. <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty warm. It's warm. Sure. It is absolutely it's very warm. Boy. Yeah, I was just discussing that with uh, another person right leading leading up to this call. I was like, we've not seen an ounce of like a ounce of rain, a drop of rain since the Tuesday after Memorial Day. Yeah, and we we had a really 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 nice spring, lots of lots of water. The, the lakes are all up to normal, but like we were all like, uh, dude, uh, once June hits, man, you ain't gonna see this again. And and we were, it was totally true. I mean, it's not gonna, it won't rain again until October. Wow. And my yard, my yard looks Dry. terrible. Oh, that thing is thirsty. It's over there. <laughs> it's parched. Dude, between that and my between that and my AC, you know the bird the birds are panting down here. I mean that's how hot it is. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, well Brian, speaking of getting in and and getting out, like Strick did in the, in Dallas, Jamar Mose into UCF and then right back out. What happened with that situation? Mm. How was Nebraska able to to hire him away after he was at UCF for all of five months? Um, well, I mean, first of all, I mean, it, Coach Mose's record at, at Lee Summit North speaks for itself. He's a, he's a very successful high school head coach in the, in the Kansas City area. Um, I, I think what this, what this says to me about Matt Rule making this hire is that he's getting very serious about wanting to be, you know, better at getting players to come out of the Kansas City area to come to Lincoln. Uh, Coach Mose can absolutely, you know, help out in that regard. I mean, first of all, he has a, a four-star wide receiver son, you know, at least some of mm-hmm. North right now, Isaiah Mose, that happened to come in for an official visit uh, the second to last weekend in the month of J- June. I think it was the 14th. Um, and he's committed to Oregon currently. And we could never really, you know, first of all, we could never get Isaiah on the phone to talk about it. I don't think anybody could. And secondly, we really couldn't explain it either. But I think we got some explanation now that, you know, that his father's decided to, to change from Orlando to Lincoln. I think that this is a big move for Coach Rule. I think, I think that, you know, one of the things I have noticed in kind of watching the offers, in watching um, where the commitments are kind of coming from, you know, a, a year ago, there were five, six, seven kids from Texas. Well, Nebraska just got their second commitment out of 16 from the state of Texas, you know, last week or this weekend. Um, so that's, that's, um, that's, that's pretty telling. I think that, you know, I think Nebraska wants to be way more serious about being successful within the radius. I think that they see that Kansas city is a little bit more of a, an open market clearly because, you know, Missouri's in Columbia, you know, and usually Oklahoma has a lot of pull, you know, coming from Norman, why can't Nebraska have that poll? You know, uh, I, I think that Nebraska is really trying to be trying to be more successful there. And I think that you and I, you know, and everybody can kind of agree that there's been a lot of influential players and a lot of players have had a lot of success and led Nebraska to success that come from the Kansas City and Missouri area in general. What's led to Nebraska's lack of success in Kansas City? Is it just not being successful in the field? Is there a lack of engagement and involvement down there? Why is Kansas City recruiting slipped for the Huskers? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I think Bill Bush was on his way to, to, to having success, you know, in the Kansas City market before kind of the rug got pulled out from underneath everyone. Um, I, I think, I think KC, you know, it's, it's, it's got its, it's got its ups and its downs. It's got some players that, you know, that, that typically are very tied into going to Oklahoma, you know, or, or, you know, Notre Dame typically has its way to get in there. Heck, Oregon, as of late, has had a chance to come in there to, to, to Kansas City area and grab guys out of it, too. I, I think it comes down to consistency, and I think it comes down to just a lack of having, like, a real connection to the market. And I think that that's a similar deal, like, when it comes to Texas. I think it's a similar deal, like, when it comes to Florida. Um, you know, Nebraska came in pretty loaded up with guys that knew their way around Texas. They had a couple guys that were, that knew their way around Florida. They didn't really have 
the keys, however, to the Midwest. And, and I think the one area where, you know, you've got to have a, somebody there that's a little bit recognizable, somebody that knows, you know, some people in the market, it's going to be Kansas City. Uh, I think St. Louis is tough, you know, just because of, of its uh, location and, and, and how close it is to Columbia. I think it is a little bit more in the SEC's backyard. I think Ohio State has a has a much better time too. Also, cherry picking, you know, St. Louis rather than you know they do going to going to uh, Kansas City. Uh, you're three hours down the road. You know, you're three hours down the road, so you can you can definitely go down to Kansas City. I think it'd be way more relevant uh, than what you have been recently in past years. Better late than never to get back down there. But Brian, it kind of feels like a missed opportunity for Nebraska. You know, over the last five, six, you can say however many more years given your expertise, but with uh, right. Kansas State and Kansas on the come up, Missouri turning into a power player in the Midwest, it seems like the yep. time for Nebraska to, to strike that iron would have been a handful of years ago instead of you know trying to get in to Kansas City at the same time as three of the programs that are even closer than you are also rapidly improving. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I mean, I think that, I think Nebraska, you know, is going to wish, you know, as as they do make this very, you know, important hire, you know, that they wish that they had a little bit more going on for it, a little bit more entrenched in the area. And they just, they don't have that. Um, you know, they, they, they've recently gotten some guys out of there. Not, not going to, not going to lie, but it, it's, I think the, the misses in particular this year, you know, the, uh, the Jack Lang, the Dawson Merritt, you know, those kinds of guys that, that I think Nebraska really felt like they had a, a pretty decent shot of bringing them up to Lincoln that they just ended up losing out on. And, and I think obviously if you, if you did, you know, like back to Stricken and I's days, you know, uh, Kansas city rockers was, was the name that you ever, you always followed in the USA today because they were always sitting in the top 10 for the, one of the top, you know, high school programs in the nation that, that power has kind of shifted out, you know, from, from that area, but at least some at North, has been, you know, one of the better teams uh, in the Kansas City area. And, of course, Mose being the former head coach from there, it helps out. It helps out to have ties back to that high school specifically. They've turned out some really excellent players over the last couple, three years. Most of those guys have visited Nebraska. And I think I think they're doing the right thing. Nebraska's doing the right thing. I think, to your point, timing here is a little bit, maybe a little bit off, Just but you're but better better late than ever. Brian Munson of Husker Online, our guest here on our Allo VIP line. You mentioned a commitment from Texas, Brian. It's the second Bryson in the 2025 class for Nebraska. Bryson Hayes from Kansas in the class, but Nebraska adds Bryson Weber, cornerback out of Texas. What's the the down low on him? Yeah, Bryson Weber was getting a lot of pressure to take a look around. I mean, he he might have been close to committing to Nebraska the week before. And then obviously the, the, the news broke on, on coach Cooper res, resigning from Nebraska. And, and um, I, I think it really, you know, obviously that's a position coach for him. It's the coach that's really ran point for him in his recruitment. So it required him to go ahead and press pause. There's a lot of programs that were still trying to find a way in. And he, he still had a, you know, schools like Utah and Baylor and Baylor. I mean, that's a team right now that's that very quietly is doing doing very well in the state of Texas. I mean, they just picked up a, a commitment from Taz Williams out of Red Oak uh, yesterday. So, um, yeah, I, I think that this is a good get for Nebraska. I think he's a talented guy that can play the the boundary corner position. He's long, uh, like six two, six two and a half. I think he's also a player that you know, with that length and the ability to be kind of a great open field tackler. Uh, rolling back to safety really isn't that huge of a stretch. So I think I think they still are looking for those versatile guys. And, and I was kind of interested to see, you know, once Coach Butler got there, to see how things would kind of start taking shape. You know, and I think it's really going to happen like with the 2026 and 2027 guys. Like we've seen it with Coach Thomas, right? They they've kind of reloaded the targets, you know, at at the quarterback position. I could see the same thing kind of happening, you know, with, with coach Butler now, you know, having a chance maybe to kind of get into some film and take a look at some guys and maybe make some new offers. Maybe we'll hear about a couple of those guys here at the end of the month of July, maybe into the first couple of three home games, you know, that are really nice times to bring some players in. But I, I think that this is a really good get from Nebraska, you know, obviously still hitting the Houston area and staying relevant down there is still huge. It's just, not a lot of Texas guys, but the, the Texas guys that Nebraska has this year and, and Simpson and, and Weber are, are very important to this class. 
So, hey, Brian, uh, one thing I'm going to throw out, and it's it's because of the recruiting, and and I just I just it, it, it's something that really can't be tracked right now. I mean, we do have some some examples out there. There are some you know some ways to kind of view it, but I'd le- love your perspective on it because Oregon football has done something, and as we spoke about Oregon, and 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 you know, uh, with some of the recruits there, and and. Yep. You know, there's a reason why they're going. <laughs> and uh, Phil Knight is basically all in it to win it. He, he's he's throwing NIL at everyone and everybody. Everybody can get it. They, he is the Oprah of NIL right now, basically. You get, you get a car. You get a car. Everyone gets a car, right? Um, but he's doing this in the Big Ten. Things haven't, you know, obviously changed. They're, it's going to be their first year in. But he's basically all in it to win it. What is your perspective on that? that that methodology of attacking trying to pay to win it win it all yeah um my my initial thought because obviously we, we've not seen a, a long enough run here i think to draw you know a, a big conclusion but my if i did, if i'm testing a hypothesis right now um i think you're gonna find that it's gonna be hit and miss I I don't think it, I don't think it makes for um, great culture when Mm -hmm. it comes to building a team. Um, You know, I think we, we've seen it a little bit kind of in the one and dones with, with college basketball. Um, So very similarly kind of carrying this thing over to to football where, you know, guys are looking for their, their piece of the pie that they think that that, that's that, that that's the big goal to get the NIL money, up front when, when, when they finally start realizing that they're playing checkers and, and the big, the big picture is, is chess. Uh, and they need to worry about, you know, getting through with an education and making themselves uh, the best possible player they can be to go on to the NFL to have a sustainable, you know, kind of a career, you know, and get that NFL retirement. Um, I, I think once people start to kind of realize that stuff, uh, it'll, it'll shift maybe back a, a little ways. But up front right now, the market's great. I mean, if, if that's what you're looking for is you're looking to go from forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars, you know, up front to you know your your six figure kind of money as a as a true freshman, I think Knight and Oregon are, are willing to pay it. I, I think I, heck, I I think Texas is willing to pay it. Uh, I think some other guys are willing to to, to go that far as well. I just don't know what that means to building a program um, and having to potentially reload, you know, year after year. I think so there's obviously there's some there's some great examples of successful teams that have done that in that college basketball, you know, kind of scenario that I brought up before. And I think that there are other ones that just, you know, you always see it that there's individuals, you know, out there playing a team sport, and uh, it just does sometimes does not mix well. It does not have doesn't provide the chemistry that you're looking for when it comes to being a team sport. So I, I think it's going to be short-term wins. I think it's going to be hit and miss. And it's going to be really, really difficult, I think, to be as involved, you know, like like those guys want to be when it comes to managing a roster and, and bringing in the kind of dollars that they want, that they want to bring in. I, I think it's greed is going to become the overwhelming uh, kind of kind of factor there, I think, amongst those amongst those players. The players are one aspect, but so is the coach, right? Dan Lanning seems like he's an up-and-coming young coach who yep. has a successful career ahead of him. And, Brian, I can see this as both a blessing and a curse for him, right? The blessing is, hey, talented players for a good coach. Trust him to make it work. Bada-bing, bada-boom, bada-bang, we're good to go. On the flip side of that, he's still a young coach. If he's given all these resources, all this money, and he doesn't win, there's a huge bullseye target on his back from the fan base. You couldn't do more with more. You did less with more. You're an underachiever. And those labels don't go away easily. So would you rather, as a, if you were a coach, have your, your biggest NIL donor, boosters, whoever, pay to get you talent and trust your ability to, to win it in, in the short term? Or would you rather have their, their backing and essentially use their money to buy you time to build the program in your image? Well, it's a great, it's a great concept. I mean, because I, the minute that you were kind of bringing that up, I, I thought about the, the, that title that maybe finally has kind of been uh, washed away from Mac Brown. Mm. I, I don't, I think, I think Mac Brown was the kind of coach, you know, down here in strict nose. Cause he spent some time down here and had, 
watched those teams and saw the recruiting classes that Mac Brown was pulling in Austin and one national championship, yeah. one national championship from all of that, yeah. you know, and then you had a, you had a dynamic playmaker like Vince Young, you know, as a quarterback. Um, but I, I think that, I, I think that that's a, that's a very interesting case because I, I think inevitably the, the, the track, the runway becomes shorter the minute that you say, I'd rather have the talent and to, to allow me to try to win versus you trying to buy me time and trying to be more organic. Um, I, I think that obviously those are, those are your X and Y axis, right? The, the money that you're spending up front versus the time, I think that in which the people will be tolerable of you, you know, not getting to the playoffs in year one or year two versus needing to make a splash like immediately. Um, those, those days are obviously going to be coming. And I, I think that those quicker judgments and, you know, it's ultimately it leads to just a lot more spend happening, you know, for head coaches and, and for rosters overall, because people will point the finger at not only just like bad coaching, but they'll look at bad evaluations and maybe we're throwing bad money at, you know, at bad players. Well, then we need to go find the good players when well, the good players are going to cost you even more. And, and that's, that, that's where, that's where I think the prices and, and, and all this stuff will escalate and it will get even worse. It's Brian Munson of Husker online, our guest three thirty on Mondays, Brian, as always appreciate your time, appreciate your insight, recommend people check you out on Twitter and huskeronline.com. Thanks Brian. Appreciate it. Strick. You got my number. Hit me up. next All time, right. Buddy. Be months. Next time I later, come guys. through later, brother. Bye.